Hi, I'm Coy Barefoot here at the University of Virginia. The history of the UVA honor system is fascinating and complex. It began as a pledge on exams. It evolved into a code of conduct outside the classroom. And it has become a system of participation and enforcement. The common story has been for many years that the honor system was born as the result of a student murdering a professor on the lawn here at the university in 1840. But the historic record tells a different story. To get some context, let's go back to the fall of 1836. The Board of Visitors of the University of Virginia had approved the idea of a student military company, foreseeing it as a positive influence on student morale and discipline. Things went rather smoothly with the student military company until the fall of 1836. When the students returned for school that year, the military company reestablished itself and began its exercises without obtaining formal permission to form from the faculty. It was not until late October that the Corps grudgingly requested permission. The professors gave their belated consent, but pointedly reminded student captain Thomas Morris of the ground rules. Chafing at the reprimand, Morris returned to the faculty a few days later and boldly stated that the university had no right to control the student military company and that the group would henceforth exist under its own authority and rules. The faculty voted swiftly and unanimously to disband the group and ordered all students with muskets to return them to the armory post haste. The students refused. In the first recorded instance of a UVA student invoking a sense of honor, the student corps sent word saying, every member of the company pledges his honor to stand by his comrades and that action against one shall affect every individual. The professors responded by expelling all 63 of the students, nearly half the entire student body. That very night, the young men rioted with a fervor unmatched by any drunken party in the 11 year history of the university. Hour upon hour, late into the night, the mob persisted with taunts and threats, dragged coal scuttles up and down the walks, hurled stones through windows, blew on loud horns, and rang the bell in the rotunda, all against the backdrop of constant gunfire. On Tuesday morning, November 15, 1836, after three consecutive days of violence, the county sheriff and two magistrates entered the grounds, followed by a military guard that assumed control of the university. The military club laid its weapons aside, and its members were readmitted to the university on a case-by-case -case basis. In the years that followed, rowdy students annually commemorated the 1836 rebellion with riots of their own, making a November melee something of a tradition here on the lawn. On Thursday night, November 12th, 1840, during one of those commemorative riots, a tragic event took place here in front of Pavilion 10 on the lawn that the university community will never forget. Robert Louis Dabney described the scene in a letter to his brother William the next day. William, the last 24 hours have been the most fatiguing and exciting that I ever went through. We were alarmed last night by the news that Mr. Davis, the chairman of the faculty, was shot in a riot which was held in commemoration of the Great Rebellion of four years ago. On running up to college, we found a dense crowd around his door in the most fearful state of excitement, awaiting the decision of the surgeons. Two rioters had been firing blank cartridges about the doors of the professors, masked and disguised. The two passed freely within a few feet of the peaceful students, completely concealed by their disguises, when one of the students told them to take care as Mr. Davis was on the watch near his house. One of the two immediately walked down that way, loading his pistol. A few moments later, another report was heard, and the masked figure was seen making off across the lawn. Some of the students heard groans, and going out, found Mr. Davis down and unable to rise. Robert Louis Dabney. The Board of Visitors hired Henry St. George Tucker, judge and attorney, to replace Davis as head of the law school. Tucker proved to be a well-liked, skillful instructor who was instrumental in instituting much-needed reforms at the college. Besides bringing about an end to the uniform requirement and a rule that said that all students must rise at dawn, Tucker initiated what would become the University of Virginia Honor Code. At a meeting of the faculty on May 31, 1842, and again on July 2nd, professors discussed the fact that they had caught students cheating on their exams. At their very next meeting on July 4, 1842, 
Professor Henry St. George Tucker proposed that henceforth all students attach a signed pledge to their exams, attesting to the fact that on their honor they had not received any help. His fellow professors agreed to the motion, and it has been a practice at the university ever since. This renewed appeal to the student's honor was an effective move. Most of the well-to-do students from Virginia's finest families thought of the pledge as a sign of their genteel status. In the years that followed, the honor pledge, originally intended only for use in the classroom, had evolved into a deeply rooted honor code. For many students, the most important and respected aspect of the University of Virginia.